Welcome back, I am Captain Xavier, and as the thumbnail would suggest, and the title today, I'm going to be talking about my Mega Shotgun Builds. Most of you have probably already seen the build guide on this one, and I'm still very pleased with it. I have updated it slightly, I've replaced the barrels with uh, colored PVC rather than painted PVC so the paint won't scratch off. Uh, somebody in the comments pointed out that they could simply be bought at HomeDepot.com, so I went and bought one inch and three quarter inch in both black and orange and uh, swapped out the barrels. Um, I had to replace this hardware as well because these screw heads had actually broken off on the other one and there was no way to actually get the old barrel out. So I just made new fittings and um, Jake has asked for the original ones to make his own. So that'll be cool. Other than that, it's the same as it was before. Same strength, I haven't upgraded the spring. I might, we will see where I go with that. But, the big update that everybody wanted to see was to make it magazine fed, and I still don't intend to do that on this one. Uh, what was pointed out that I hadn't thought of is that um, the Magnus you're able to top off while without taking the magazine off because of the design. And I do really like that, so I may build another one of these and make it magazine fed, but I wanted to retain that general Spaz 12 look. Um, I am looking into figuring out how to build a stock. If I can't get a functional folding stock to work, I will build just a purely cosmetic folded stock just because I really like the look that the Spaz 12s have. Plus, it would give me dart holders along the top. So, that is the story on that. But, the reason I originally said I wasn't going to put a magazine in it was because I had always intended to build this. This is... The same basic concept, but built using a Busby Boss, which is already magazine fed, which saved me all the trouble of figuring out how on earth to do that. But I wanted to do this video comparing the two side by side, doing the range test, chrono test, and all of that. I'm probably not being able, going to be able to get a uh, draw test on these, just because the design doesn't really lend itself. I might be able to figure out how to do it, but in all likelihood, uh, I'm just going to have to say that it's really, really heavy, especially this one. This one has um, both its original spring and the Tyrant spring that I took out of my Tyrant when I K26'd it. So this thing has a mean prime. Um, over the course of the last two days, constantly priming it, uh, my right arm has actually gotten a little bit sore, uh, especially the elbow, which is unpleasant, but it speaks of the power that this thing has. So, without further ado, let's do some science. I do not have a stock boss around. I do have a stock Magnus, which we will use basically as the benchmark. So, I assume they're roughly equivalent, um, but we'll find out. So, let's get my chrono going. High 70s with a max of 90, which I am thoroughly pleased with. Now for the boss. Not looking forward to priming this that many times. Interesting. All right, well, the field tests returned some slightly surprising results, in my opinion. The stock Magnus came in at 4.5 kilograms of draw, was getting about 75 feet per second, and fired 75 feet. The Magnus shotgun, with a slightly upgraded spring, came in at a 8.5 kilogram draw, was getting 85 feet per second average, and fired 80 feet. The surprising one was the Boss. It's coming in at 13 kilograms of draw, but only getting seven, about 60 feet. And I suspect that is because this one has not been in any way really optimized. I doubled the spring load, but I didn't actually do anything with the seals. I didn't remove the AR. However, where I really think the issue is coming is from the gap that exists between the end of the dart tube and the barrels themselves. There's actually about two inches of gap right there where the dart has to go from the tube into the barrel and then fly down the barrels. The barrels are probably not helping either as long barrels are, you know, we know not good for Nerf guns. But that gap does not exist in the Magnus. It pretty much goes right up to it. Um, I may be able to do something about that, but this thing has a shorter prime than the Magnus. 
and so I can't really extend that tube any, what I might be able to do is take out some of the dead space on this side. I'm not entirely sure how because of some of the mechanisms that are in there, but I really want to try because I really want this to be a more functional blaster. Uh, and with that much of a spring load on that big of a plunger tube, there's really no excuse for it to be getting that poor of performance. So, we will have to see where my upgrades take me on that. But for now, I'm fairly pleased with both of these. They are, after all, supposed to be shotguns, not sniper rifles. So, 60 feet is still an acceptable range for me. This one I enjoy a lot more. The draw is not as heavy. It's easier to use, and it's actually getting the best performance. This one has, of course, the greater potential if I can get a little bit more power out of it. So as a final conclusion, um, disappointing performance out of the boss. Clearly, I need to tweak the internals a little bit more on that. I'm very pleased with the Magnus. I am kind of tempted at this point to build a second one that has the six-round magazine built in. We'll see if I do that or not. I did want to give one shout out to the fellows who I got the idea from, uh, Andrew and Mao. Mao was the original creator, Andrew was the guy who commissioned them. They are both from, I believe, a Malaysian uh, nerfing group, and they asked me to give them a shout out and to mention that they are having an event on the 18th that they are calling DZM March Madness. Uh, their group is hashtag DartZoneMNL. Check them out. If you're in their area, go to that event. I'm sure it'd be awesome. If not, check out their site, like their stuff, say hello, uh, spread the word. They clearly do have great ideas out there, so that is awesome. If you have any comments, suggestions, ideas, especially suggestions on how I can uh, beef up the internals on this, uh, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.